Oh hi guys, Nova here. I have a review for you today. Um, I'm going to review a video game that I recently finished. It is Final Fantasy XV. Now this is going to be, I'm going to call it an honest review from a long time fan. Um, if you have no idea what this game is, you just don't give a shit, then I'm sorry, but I just have to rant about this. Olympia has been listening to me rant about this game for the past few weeks and I just can't stop talking about it, so I just need to get it off my chest, okay? I'm gonna start with the good stuff. Now this, this game has been a, a long time coming. It was first announced 10 years ago. So if you are a fan of the franchise, you've been waiting for it for a long time. Let's start with the good stuff. The music, I'm fairly certain it's um, Nobuo Uematsu, he does most of the games, it's flawless. If it's not him, it's still flawless. I love this soundtrack. I have this soundtrack. The piano pieces are beautiful. It just creates such an atmosphere. I cannot fault the music. The music is fantastic. I also think, considering that this was a global release, so we've had several versions being dubbed at once for like a global release, the voice acting's not bad. The English voice acting's not bad. I did try to listen to it in Japanese because you do have the option to have Japanese audio and English subtitles. But I think there's just too much audio and dialogue that goes along. Like in the background, little things that like Prompto might say, that you can't like be playing the game, looking at your stats and reading subtitles at the same time, it got too confusing. But um, the, honestly, the English voice acting is fairly good. I think all of the principal characters are great. I think they're great. I'm also really, really a big fan of how sometimes they'll do a Final Fantasy game that just repeatedly alludes to previous games in the series. I think it was really noticeable when Nine did it. Nine had nods to loads of different games previously. I think most noticeably a lot of people really enjoyed you were in a weapon shop and you could see Cloud's sword on the wall. Um, Twelve also did it in a similar way with monsters and names and this one has done it again, 15, most noticeably in the monster designs. There are so many that are just straight out plucked from Final Fantasy V or IV, like the pixel little sprites and they just turn them into real life beings. I love that, I think it's just such a cool way to really like appease long time fans of the series, so I, I was all over that. Also, despite what I'm about to go on to say with this game, it is fun. It is fun. I had fun playing it. Um, the first half of the game is is great. It's so much fun. Um, I'm not really sure what it would be like if you went into it as your first Final Fantasy game, or if you went into it without having followed the development. I'm not sure for, for newcomers, fresh-faced newcomers, how you would react to this game. The first half of the game especially is really fun. We have this open world that they've created. We're exploring the land of Lucis, and there is just so much thrown at you straight away. I really, really just found it fascinating exploring everything through all these side quests. I'm the kind of person who I went and did pretty much every single side quest that I could. I know that some of them are a bit repetitive and people were saying, oh, they're just kind of like, you pick something off the ground and go back to whoever asked you to get it. But I live for that shit. I love collecting stuff. I'm like a real completionist. I, I like to play every single aspect of the game that there is offered to me. I also am a big fan of the skills that the main four characters have, especially the fishing. That was such an unexpected surprise. How much fun was that? And the cooking as well. I'm just, I, I like that it kind of fleshed out those characters a little bit with these mini games. The chocobo races, the mini games were great. They were really good. However, however, I felt like this game was way too easy. Too easy. I'm used to Final Fantasy games taking me a good few months to play through. Um, I mean, this, I, I don't think there was ever one point, no, one, I don't think there was ever one point during the main storyline where I felt like I, I couldn't just breeze through it. I did every single story boss first time. I, was, I never died, I never died. Like, it's too easy, even the final boss, like, whilst it was kind of cool, it was too easy. I shouldn't be doing the final boss first time. It's ridiculous. Usually it would take me a, a, a good few goes. And I think a lot of that as well ties into the fact that the storyline was so short. It was so short, you guys. We were given so much to, like, uh, try and understand what was going on. We had the Kingsglaive movie, which really could have been in the game. 
let's be honest, it could have been in the game, could have been in the game. It has cutscenes, didn't have to be playable. I know that with the Crown updates, they went and put a few scenes in as cutscenes, but it didn't really make any sense when they did that. They weren't explaining what was going on. Um, and then we had this Brotherhood anime, which was fun, it was really cute. But again, even that had some inconsistencies now with the, with the game. It's just, it was all a bit, a bit rushed. Um, without all of this outside information, I'm not sure how many people would really understand what was going on. I mean, I had to even research the ending because all of this like really epic, intense lore is thrown at you in the last chapter and never really explained up until then. And it's just, it's a lot to get your head around. So I don't know. I thought the storyline was short. It was really obvious that they had several rewrites and there were so many gaps with so many characters. I find it really upsetting. There was just no real character development in this story. The, the, the people you feel most for, and rightly so, are the four brothers, as it were, the, the, your main party, and that's fine. But even then there wasn't really a lot of character development. If you don't watch the complimentary pieces like King's Glaive and Brotherhood, you don't really know why you give a shit about these people. I mean, Noctis and, and Luna Freya, like, Luna's supposed to be his, his love, his, his fiance. I just don't really give a shit about her. I mean, I'm echoing what a lot of other people have said online, that I cared, okay, so spoilers, 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 spoilers. I cared way more when Ignis was made blind than when Luna Freya died. And I still didn't really care when Ignis was made blind. I was more annoyed. It meant that he was like kind of dragging up the rear in that part of the game and he was really slow and just kind of pissed me off and I felt like it was just a sad storyline for no apparent reason. There was no need for him to be blind. It was just depressing, especially on the back of Luna dying. It was all just sad for no reason. When I got kind of over halfway into this game, you, I could start to see that there were some things I've been looking forward to in the trailers that just weren't going to happen. Notably, um, the battle with Leviathan is fucking nothing like we had in the trailers. I think as recent as 2015, maybe even 2016. Nothing like it. Nothing at all. And that pissed me off. Because you can't just go advertising an epic part of a game and then just not, just completely changing it, completely changing it. That was really disappointing. And there were a lot of things like that. If now I'm watch, going back and watching these trailers after finishing the game, there are some where you really are struggling to find a scene that made it to the final product. And this brings me on to the core of this rant, as it were, the amount of cut content. Now, I understand that when you're busy developing a huge game like this, there's gonna be things that change, you are gonna take things out, you're gonna change things. But there are some things that are so glaringly obviously cut. Like, there was so obviously, uh, towards the end of the game, the chapters become shorter and shorter and shorter. And it's, it seemed really clear to me that they were once longer. I mean, there was obviously supposed to be a place to explore in Altisha with your car. Because why would you be taking your car with you if you weren't going to drive it? And also, that map is so big and you only get to explore this one single city and not even the whole city. So I really feel like that was obviously all cut out. When we get finally see Shiva, that whole area is so linear and so tiny. I mean, as we have learned now, that there was supposed to be an explorable dungeon there. But I, I, to me, it's, it feels like there's something missing. And that is the problem. If you're going to cut out content, you can't let it be left feeling like there's content missing. Do you know what I mean? You have to do it in a way so that people who don't know any better don't miss it. And I missed that content there. Again, going back to these trailers, I feel like any kind of emotion I had towards the characters in this game, Noctis, Luna, Regis, Arden even, are probably kind of not fair for me to have based on the game alone. There are so many cutscenes that were presented in trailers and I kind of feel like I might have this emotional connection to characters when they don't really deserve that based on stuff in trailers that was cut from the game. There were so many scenes with Noctis and his father Regis that were so touching, they were so cute. There was a scene, lots of scenes of him as a child being in his father's arms crying or a scene where they were eating the soup and it was too hot and just lots of things got cut. And the same with Luna Freya. Lots of stuff got cut and I need that to 
to have a emotional connection to these people. So doing research on all of this, trying to find out where this cut content went, would it be downloadable content? I stumbled across this podcast. I'm gonna link it down below. I'm not going to basically just copy everything they've said, but I learned a lot from this and doing further research as well. It turns out this game was an absolute fucking nightmare to make and we should all be very lucky that we got anything at all. <laughs> There were so many areas and scenes of the game, it sounds, that were cut A, either because they just didn't have the time to finish them, or B, because they couldn't run them. Apparently, there were lots of areas of the game, including the Leviathan battle, that ran fine on their high-end PCs, and as soon as they ported it to console, it would turn to shit. Like, it just didn't work. And that is upsetting. I feel like, would they maybe be able to finish these with more development time? I don't know. But in this podcast, there is a link to a forum that has reposted a thread from 4chan, which I know you guys isn't like the most reliable, but apparently somebody who was working on the game turned up on this forum and started writing a whole lot of stuff about this. You should go and look at it if you care because it really is so interesting to see how it all went to shit towards the end, towards the release of this game. And it explains so much. The podcast also mentions a separate developer um, on a separate thread, who has apparently told somebody that there was a, the original storyline of Versus before it became 15. This original storyline, whilst it's not necessarily as believable as the first leak, I still believe it. You can see so much of it in the old trailers. So the, the gist of it was that Noctis kills Luna before the game even begins and doesn't remember it. That in itself is so cool. And that would explain why Ravis hates him and wants revenge. And then there was also this whole big thing about like a, the, the star scourge coming out of the sky and a blood moon appearing. You guys, there was just, there was so much and it was so, so cool. There were gonna be even more allusions to the previous games. Um, we were supposed to have Garland as a god. There's supposed to be gods and goddesses. It was all cut. It was all changed and I can't help now but play this game without thinking about what it could have been. I think that's the bottom line. I enjoyed this game but I feel like it's been tainted now that I know what could have been. And I don't, I don't know. I don't know if I can ever look at it the same way. So just to round up this little rant, I mean if you're still with me, congratulations because a lot of you guys, I'm sure you're fucking gone. But anyway, thank you for persevering with this. I do recommend this game. If you've never played it before, if you've never played a Final Fantasy game before, it is it is fun. I mean, like, there's not really much story, but it's it's a fun game. It's pretty to look at. The graphics are quite good. So please pick it up. Like, it, it is fun. I just feel like it wasn't worth waiting 10 years for. And I understand that there was ultimately only about three years development into this final product, but for me, I've been waiting 10 years. I expected a game that looks like it's taken 10 years, and this doesn't. So in that respect, it was a bit of a letdown for me. But please go and play it if you're coming at it from like a, a, a freshly new perspective and you have no idea about the franchise or the game. And for those of you who feel like me, you're a bit frustrated about this kind of shell that we were left with, you need to be active on social media, go into the Final Fantasy forums, write down your thoughts, because look, when Final Fantasy XIV came out and it was a pile of absolute wank, they changed it. They changed the entire game. They, they, they got rid of it and redeveloped the entire game. It was all new because of fans, because fans said it was shit and we don't want to pay money for this. So that worked. They are listening to fan feedback. So I think it's so important that if you think that it was all kind of a bit disappointing, be vocal on social media and tell Square Enix that we want all of this cut content put back in. Right, I'm done with ranting. As I said, I finished this game. I'm still gonna play all of the, the post-game stuff. I wanna do like the Adamantoys and Piteous and stuff like that. So I might tweet or Instagram once I finish that, like a last final few thoughts, but as, as it is now, it's fine, it's fun. Uh, to be honest, I'm so like loyal to the Final Fantasy series, they could probably deliver me a turd and I'd still play it. But it shouldn't be that way, you know what I mean? It shouldn't be that way. Anyway, I don't know. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel. Leave me a comment what you think about this situation. And I apologise if you just do not give a shit about Final Fantasy XV. As I said, completely indulgent video, I had to do it. Thank you so much. Bye!